up? What's up? What's up? Hope you're having a wonderful Thursday afternoon. Uh, I'm jumping on to do to address a couple of things that have come up recently <laughs> for myself, for Compound Media. There's so much going on. But before I get into that, guys, make sure you have your tickets for this weekend. Uh, it's Comedians of the Compound in Atlantic City. Uh, the gang will all be there. Myself, Anthony Cumia, Aaron Berg, Gina Bisconti, Pat Dixon, Don Jameson, and a couple of others. Get your tickets at compoundcomedy.com. We'll be in Atlantic City two nights this Friday and Saturday night. It's going to be a banger. Obviously, fun gambling afterwards. A fun hang. Check it out. Get your tickets. It's going to be great. It's going to be a fun time. Uh, and then also, I'll be headlining in May uh, at Tiff's Ale House, a.k.a. the Dojo of Comedy, on Saturday, May 14th. And for tickets to that show, you can go to my website, chrissymayer.com. Okay. I'm not sure how much cleavage to have for this. Uh, I want to address, so, God, there's so much going on. So much drama going on at Compound Media. And Monday, I had, uh, I always have multiple guests on my show on Mondays, on the wet spot, on Compound Media. Tune in at 7 p.m. Eastern. I always have a panel show. I always have multiple guests. Sometimes they're porn stars, sometimes they're comedians, sometimes uh, they're just sort of TV personalities. Sometimes they'll, it'll be like a su super fan who comes in. So it's always a mix of all types of guests on there. So on Monday, uh, God, we had such a packed show. I had my friend Gigi Dior on who does OnlyFans. Uh, and I think we, yeah, Jim Stancil was on who is like, has done comedy, but is also like a super fan. Just, he's a fixture at compound, um, had Sarah J on who was booked through, uh, my friend Lainey Spicer, who is a publicist for many adult film stars, worked with her for years, uh, worked with her for years. She's a great lady super nice um usually i hit it off with her guests and it's great and i end up becoming friends with them and we worked together for years it didn't it didn't work out with sarah but she said hey can she come by and promote herself and her gigs i said sure fine she comes over uh she does the show it was a whole a ton of guests actually kind of more than usual because then kevin brennan walked in last minute and he i don't think he's ever done my show wet spot so that was kind of exciting he came in with um matt mead and this guy hack jokerson I don't, I don't think that's his real name but they were drinking across the bar and they were like oh let's come up let's hang out for the show and this happens and it's fun it's like one of the great things about compound media is our kind of uh i don't know fandom community friendships etc plus i had this guy ian who's a super fan come up uh he's a super fan of of the adult film star girls plus uh, andrew harms was there plus andrew steiner was another booked guest so there's tons of people on this show already and i wanted i just wanted to give a little bit of context for the sarah J thing because i posted a clip you know people were saying we need to see the clip we need to see the clip we need to see what she left over, what happened. So I posted a clip on my YouTube of the of Sarah J, you know, getting triggered by Gino's phone call and walking up. And for those of you who haven't seen it, I will play it for you now just so we are completely caught up and I will explain a little bit of, of context. Um so so Gino and Kevin Brennan have been long time like friends, beeping, whatever what i what i think people need to understand going into this clip is there are so many inside jokes uh between compound media talent between the talent and the fans and the viewers and these are people that have known each other for years so there's a ton of of background here and so gino comes into this phone call. he comes in hot who cares if he's like drunk or not whatever this is not me saying i i defends gino saying the n-word or slurs like i personally don't love saying the n-word i personally don't think it's fun to just say um like willy-nilly i i generally try not to say it ever so this is not me defending Gino. I, I also believe Compound Media, it's a free speech network similar to like a Rockfin and a couple of others. 
Uh, I believe people should be able to say whatever they want to say. I believe that words only have the power that you give them. And perhaps you are better prepared for life going through it, being someone that is not offended by words, because then you just kind of can withstand more situations. But um, I just think it's important to know that like going into this phone call, Gino and Kevin Brennan have background. They have inside jokes. They have ways of trying to like fuck with each other and piss each other off. So that's what's happening in this phone call. Uh, I'm going to play it for you guys and then I will explain it a bit further here. So this is from my Monday night show on Compound Media uh, called The Wet Spot. I have adult film stars on. I have friends on. I have comedians on. It's a mixed bag. So it's like it was never supposed to be like just Sarah J. It wasn't like supposed to be an interview. I think in one of her press releases, she said interview. Never going to be an interview. She was always going to be just like one of many people on my show. So I'm just going to play this clip. Oh, it's Gino. Gino's on oh, the line. Oh, let me explain <laughs> it. They put Gino oh, and by, and by the way, this is the censored version. So there's going to be like a ton of bleeps. Like I don't, you know, you could use your imagination, but I just figure like, why, why trigger the algorithm again by, I mean, I'm not going to play the completely, if you want to listen to the completely uncensored version, um, go to compound media. There might even be a, a, a clip going around on Twitter if you really want to hear it, but this is the censored version. So there's get ready for a lot of beeps. <laughs> As if there's any other Gino that would call into this Excuse show. Me, one last time. Why is everyone such a hack? I uh -oh. said I'm leaving. Maddie said I got the check. I gave it. Maddie is like Matt Mead, the fan who came in with Kevin Brennan. Because they're all hanging out. They're all drinking. It's like the last week of In Hot Water. There's a lot of fans in town. A lot of hanging out before, after, during shows. I'm $100. He gave me money back. I never walk out on a check. Tell one, Kevin Brennan, to try harder. Two, I'm nothing but nice about this show. I'm sorry fucking Aaron Berg is a fucking coward. And I've been Whoa. coming for him this whole time. <laughs> is this the uncensored version? Hold on. Does he say fuck? No, this has to be... Yeah, this is on my YouTube. This is the censored version. But I will not put up Stop with... Yeah, 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 it is. <laughs> Ooh, scared for a second. Okay. Hey, like Kevin Brennan, like, and then he yard. walked out. Kevin, I'm sorry I can't carry your shit show anymore. My back is killing me. What the fuck do you want? I've never walked out on a cab. Don't be a hack. No, so he's upset. Else. He's upset because somebody uh, accused him of walking out on a tab. That's why he's coming into this phone call hot. Again, this has nothing to do with anybody sitting at the desk. This is just Gino's. Beef about a tab uh, and, and and inside jokes with Kim Brennan. Also, and for Christ's sake, I'm sorry that I can't do any more for these people, but daddy is uncancelable and everyone else the fuck is, which is why your friend Kevin Brennan is a uh, that cancels everything you say. We got five seconds. laughing. I hope I don't get canceled because I'm a bad boy, but <laughs> like Kevin Brennan acts bad and then he says, edit that. Cancel that. Kevin, say what you said in the bar. <laughs> shouldn't vote and they're not people. That's what Kevin Brennan said to me in the bar. And then I'm like, I He's have to leave. Phrasing. Let me get the tab. And I threw $300 down on the bar. Oh, now it's and 300? fucking Matt is like, I can't take your money because then they'll know that you love that racist <laughs> or hater Kevin Brennan like I do and watch me not get canceled. Kevin Brennan, deny any of this. You can't. Okay. Gina, are you go. still at the bar? Are you calling from the... If you're calling from the bar, just come over here. No, because I'm from a bar fucking in drunk that I had to leave the bar while all these f are like, drink more. And I'm like, I don't feel like drinking anymore. This is not if true. if you listen to the lying narrative, all I do is drink. Hey, Kevin, say it. Say you hate like Sorry, you did 14 Sarah. times. Yes, yeah, you bar. always have people come say on it. here and say Kevin, uh, slurs. Let me tell you no. guys something. Okay, cool. Again, like a lot of, a lot of people, and I've seen a lot of uh, comments on Twitter like, why did Chrissy let this go on for so long? Because I can see that, like, I, I, I'm letting this play out. I'm not offended by anything that's being said because it's not directed at me. And and nothing that Gino is saying is being directed at, at, at Sarah J. Nothing is being directed at Jim Stancil or Gigi Dior. So, again, this is this is inside beef, jokes, whatever, between Gino and Kevin. Kevin's laughing. You know what I mean? Like, maybe he's just trying to make him cringe or make him feel uncomfortable, whatever. I, I let this go on as long as it did because I am waiting for some kind of resolution. I am waiting for some kind of, you know, 
And that's how I feel about that. But he kind of just kept going. And I and I said to Sarah, I'm like, all right, like I'm trying to keep it light. I'm trying to talk to her and be like, OK, like we're starting to wrap this up. Like, I see you. I'm acknowledging you. At no point did I think she was going to walk off. Uh, but again, I let this go on as long as I didn't because uh, I'm I'm waiting to see what's going to happen. Will there be a resolution? Kevin the said, first time. No, he has a show I at two o'clock. How much I hate as much as Usually I do the, on my podcast, we have slurs from two to then four. I get canceled. Right, right. So I'll say it Make as sure you book me next time at 4.15. Promise me that when I walk out on the tab, we can blame Gino and I'll pretend that I hate Oh, wow. You know, you're turning this into the dry spot. What are you going to take a shot at Redheads now? Kevin, hey, I hope I don't get canceled. You know, you need to go to the dry spot and get rehab. rehab. Nobody knows who you are anyway. (laughs) Do do people know who Gino Gino is? Gino's Gino's funny. funny. I would have for Gino. Oh, my God. You know, you're funny. Gino, are you still upset about, about the Aaron stuff? I'm sorry that I, look, I'm going to say it again. I'm sorry that I'm so nice to people that I always show up in a good mood and they think that I must have done something wrong because they're still mad at me, but I'm never mad at them because I'm so easygoing and forgiving. So they're like, obviously, Gino's a piece of shit. I'm gonna tell you seem you easygoing. Something. I'm an amazing person. Kevin <laughs> Brennan's one of the most brilliant comedians I know. I know he hates that's all he ever says to me. <laughs> I don't mind. And to me, it's like, okay, he's just trying to make Kevin laugh at this point, which he's succeeding in. Again, n- none of this is being directed at Sarah J. Uh, Gino is not calling her the N-word. He is not at all taking a shot at her. He's working his shit out with Kevin. They're on every show. We'll have we'll take calls that have nothing to do with any of the guests because there's always th- you know what I mean? Like a lot of us work with each other. A lot of us are friends. There's always something to joke about on another show that has nothing to do with the current show. But you understand? Gina, you and have Maddie's one more. Like, Look, you get I'll one more. Like Gina walked out on the tab. If if you help me cover my story that I hate. <laughs> what, what, do you understand? This is lightening up a little bit. I'll tell you what <laughs> uncancelable is. It's aggressive. not saying I've got to leave the show. Sarah's leaving. Like Sarah didn't say anything. Uh, she's just leaving. So at this point, I was like, "Oh, is she getting a drink? Is she coming back?" Yeah, just just get out as your chance. Please wow. promise me. All right. Promise me while you try to talk to me soon. that you will never cancel anything that just happened on this. Because it's All right, just Gino, like I gotta hang out with you because you walked uh, one of my guests. But um, which, which one? Which I one? think I'm either either she's getting drink? another drink or peeing or leaving. I don't know. I did kind of want to hear oh, a little all bit right. from Maybe her. Maybe she went to fuck some. Or something. I hope. I no. hope. Why did you take right, the call? Gino, we'll Hang talk up. to you soon. Love you. Bye. Okay. So as soon as I could see that it upset her enough for her to walk away, I was like, okay, let me wrap this up. Um, that is the only reason. That's the the main question of why did you let him go on so long? Why why did you let him keep saying those words? First of all, I don't control anybody. Again, I don't like to use those words, but it, people can say whatever they want. Uh, I just think it was very hypocritical of of Sarah to to she walked out. I didn't hear anything from her. Uh, I immediately contacted her publicist and said, I'm so sorry she had a bad time. Uh, There's a lot going on with the network. Um, I mean, there's no way you would hear that and be like any of that was directed at her. It had nothing to do with her. It was like none of her business. So she really took it upon herself to make it about her and and be offended over something that was had nothing to do with her. And then she took to Twitter and God, let me see if I can find the tweet because I think um she since blocked me. Always, which is always fun to do when you're trying to like uh, look up what people have said. She so then I I, I apologize, Selene. I said I'm sorry she had a bad time, you know. And she's like, ah, oh, that's why I didn't put her on in hot water because because of how Gino is. And I'm like, hey, Gino normally does not like call into the show, and if he does, it's it's nothing like that. This was a special occasion. This was especially because Kevin Brennan was there, and whatever their inside jokes are. Um, so I definitely was like, I'm sorry she had a bad time, and I thought we were cool. I thought we were kind of like at an understanding. And then Sarah gets on Twitter and says, let me see if I can pull up um, the tweet. I mean, I'm blocked. I guess I could read it. 
because at the time I did take a screenshot. I mean, you guys who are not blocked by Sarah J can look it up, but um, something about like my first, yeah. Uh, Sarah J said, so I just walked out of my first interview. Who gets the honors at Chrissy Mayer by allowing racist rant to continue on her show? She's part of the problem. I can't be part of that again. Like she looks like such a hypocrite because she's an adult film star. She works a lot with black guys. She has many, many, many videos. There are many clips of her even going around on Twitter right now where she is straight up saying the N word, yelling it into a guy's face. Uh, to me, that's very hypocritical. And I even had some tweet like, oh, I learned an important lesson. I learned that like the N word is only OK to say while you're all right, I'll bring up my tweet. Uh, it's been fun. It's been a fun couple days. All right, let's bring this up. OK. I learned an important lesson last night. I apologize to Sarah J and anyone else who was offended by hearing slurs on a comedy show. I now know the N word is only okay to say if you scream it while getting plowed on camera again, because she, after some of the other shows have talked about this walkout too. And, and the fans are very quick with the internet and they're very quick to bring up these clips of her, like saying the N word while she's getting banged out. So to me, that's very hypocritical. And also, like Sarah had this whole, um, she's you know she's in town doing several shows. I think she's doing like a Cypher Sounds show, Godfrey's show, many other shows where perhaps the N word could have been uttered for a variety of reasons. And uh, I just think it's it's kind of a double standard that like if someone on one of those shows said the N word, I doubt she would walk off. But because it said on my show, walks off, she gets to virtue signal and be like, oh, I'm uh, again, like, I don't personally think Gino is racist. I am not defending what he did. I don't like it. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of saying it to me. Like, I don't think it's super funny, but people can say whatever they want. So I just think she just went ahead and made the situation about her. She did not need to. And then I think she blocked me after this one because I pointed out the hypocrisy. So with you guys like uh, it's i don't know it's not that big a deal people like oh my god how could you it's like i would and i was the show had to go on it's not like i was gonna run after her begging and pleading please come back there was plenty of guests there plenty of show plenty of people to talk talk with and about so i mean losing one guest is not not a huge deal the show is not for everybody not everyone can hang with you know comedians and uh again like i just feel and and that's the thing is like Gigi dior also an adult film star also works with black guys did not use that opportunity to virtue signal so um because she, she realized it wasn't about her and she didn't need to make it about her so yeah i don't know that's the only reason if it had been a random person calling in and saying the N-word all those times, yeah, I would have hung up. I would have hung up much sooner. I would have been like, what's the point of this? What's what's the joke behind this? All right, this isn't going anywhere, bye. And it wasn't really going anywhere with Gino, but I just was like waiting for some kind of resolution. I was waiting for like, I don't know, their, them to finish their spat about the bill, and then it turned into a rant. So whatever, that's that's why that's why it went down like that. Um, so I hope that clarifies a few things. The other thing I wanted to talk about was, and, and here's another thing like that has to do with really, I guess, like addressing rumors and things like that. And, uh, it's one thing if fans of compound media start a rumor or viewers of compound media start a start a rumor that usually doesn't bother me because it's easy to dismiss, but I feel like I, what, what I do need to address is when someone who works at the network uh, says something that to me looks like starting a rumor or, or is a f false information that's being put out there. Then to me, I, that is something I have to address. So, and, and this is about Bobby Tamburo who w works for the network. He also does stand up. He's, he's been involved on the, on these comedians of the compound shows. Like he's someone I actually really like and have never had a problem with and have always thought was cool and have always been cool with. And so to see this was like so upsetting and disappointing to me. 
And at first I was like angry and then I was very upset. And then, so now I just, I don't know. Now I just feel like I need to talk about it to address some things because he's somebody who works at the network. And um, obviously people like will, will believe what he says when he says a thing. So, all right. So this is from the dump. This is from Monday's episode, which is a show that Steve Conti does uh, before in hot water starts. This is from this past Monday, April 18th. Uh, and I'm going to start it off from when, so this, Bobby is on this show as well. And I just want to address some of the things he said because they really bothered me. Buying time, buying time. Well, buying I've time. got some big news. If you are going to comedians of the compound AC, you will not be seeing me. That's right. We are live streaming and clearly I do not want to be live streamed, so I will not be performing at the AC shows. Just a quick, quick bit of news. Huh? Are you in your period, Bobby? Well, you know me. I'm more worried about my image than performing with my friends and fans. So, so what he's talking about here um, is something we've been talking about on the network, and that is the idea that the Comedians of the Compound show, which is happening this weekend, which I just promoted, uh, was going to be live streamed. And no one had any idea this was going to happen. Uh, I think the first time it was even mentioned was Thursday, April 14th. Uh, Aaron had put out a tweet around noon that they were that we were now going to be selling live streaming tickets to this show. And that was the first I had ever heard of that. I was I was very shocked. I was like, oh, well, this is this is new. Uh, and so I saw this tweet and then I was like, oh, well, that's that's news to me. So then I emailed uh, I emailed everybody involved with the show. and. I'm going to bring it up here. I said, uh, this is from, all right, let me make sure I'm bringing this up. Yeah. This is me emailing everybody. Hey everyone. I did this. I emailed about 45 minutes after I saw this tweet. This is on Thursday, April 14th. Hey everyone. Not sure why tickets are being sold to a live stream version of the Atlantic city show, but I won't do the show. If this is the case, this should have been discussed beforehand with the entire group and a consensus should have been made. We should be encouraging all of our fans to as attend shows in person. We didn't even do this during the pandemic, so why would we do it now that it's over? It diminishes the value to see any of us individually or on tour together in the future. It cheapens all of our brands individually and collectively. I need to know by the end of the day if this is what is really happening so I can let my fans know whether I'll be there or not. And Aaron just, just writes back, cool, that's it. He doesn't to me, this doesn't look like he wanted to talk about it. I was like, okay, that's a strange response. But he just writes back, cool. And then Don writes, I'm assuming this is to generate extra money. Um, I agree with Chrissy. We should have all been asked in advance. But it's cool with me as long as I get a cut. So this was not discussed with anybody. And again, I didn't, I didn't take to a show or a live stream or anything to talk about it. I emailed the whole group to say, hey, this is a, this is a curveball. I'm not really on board with this. Uh, I just did an album that I'm trying to get people to buy. I would rather point people towards looking at the album that I just put out a couple months ago to to a live stream. I'd rather point people to that. And also I'm headlining in May in Jersey as well. So it's like it's Atlantic City. It's Jersey. You want people to see you in person. I, I personally feel like it, it cheapens the whole experience to get it on live stream. This is why I heavily avoided Zoom shows during the pandemic. I just don't think... It's the same effect. Um, and, and of course, like if you want to, you know, you're always free to set up your own camera and film yourself. That way, if you have a fun crowd moment or a joke that you want to post on your own social media, like all comedians do this. Nothing against like you putting out your own clips uh, if you want to do that. But I just very much had a problem with live streaming the entire show because I felt like it cheapens the whole event. And I want I thought we all should have encouraged our fans to come see us in person. And also I had a problem with this being laid on all of us with no advance notice and no discussion. Um, So that was like Thursday. And then, you know, and I wasn't the only one who felt this way. Anthony texted me after I sent that email being like, yeah, I agree with you. Like I'm not really on board with the live stream idea either. And then he brings it up on his show that, that same day, that Thursday as well. Um, you know, he even says that, like, he he agrees. He 
he agreed that it was uh, an issue. The quality is not always so good. Um, he, he showed he was on with Kevin Brennan. They both showed concerns over why a live stream is kind of like not a great idea. I call in Berg calls in. We kind of go back and forth on it. Uh, and Anthony was like, yeah, I didn't know about this either. Like none of us really knew about it. And then Aaron's like, yes, it was a surprise. So we're just talking this out. Like the first time it was really discussed was live on Anthony's show. There was no um, like real discussion of this until it was live on his show. So like I call in, Aaron calls in, it's like back and forth. And then to me, it seemed like resolved, like the live stream was going to be off um, because Anthony also had a had an issue with it. So then I call in back again saying like, hey, am I back on? Like I'm trying to be cute. But I'm like, now that the live stream is not happening, I'm back on, right? And then he's like, yes, of course. This is all good. It's all settled. And, you know, we were just bringing up concerns of when you live stream a show, no matter what platform it's on, no matter what software you use, no matter if it's being recorded or not, anyone can record anything that's ever streamed on the internet. Um, that is something that is a known fact. So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys some context for why I had a, uh, an issue with, with live streaming, with participating in the live stream of the show. And when I first brought it up, like Aaron was like, okay, you're just off the show. And I was like, okay, cause that's how I feel. And he understood. And then when Anthony also had a problem with it, then it, this idea was considered of, okay, maybe we won't live stream certain people. So I was like, cool. Would love to still, still, to still do the show. So that is context for, um, why I did not love the idea of a live stream. I think it's pretty reasonable. And I think lots of comedians would, would like agree because you want people to see you live because it's always better live. So anyway, this is like, and as you can see, like Bobby is, I don't know, I guess making fun of me um, for not wanting to do the live stream. So I'll replay Going this. To comedians of the compound AC, you will not be seeing me. That's right. We are live streaming. Right. Because this happened on uh, Monday. So the, the, the conversation on Kumia's show happened on Thursday the 14th. This is now Monday the 18th. First show back. Uh, and, and this is Bobby talking about it. And clearly... I do not want to be live streamed, so I will not be performing at the AC shows. Just a quick, quick bit of news. Uh? And so he's like bringing this up out of nowhere. Like I watch the show sometimes, but not all the time. So, and obviously Luby's like, she seems surprised by this. And, and, uh, anyway, I'll just like keep playing. Are you on your period, Bobby? Well, you know me, I'm more worried about my image than performing with my friends and fans. So, I am going to focus on that. I don't have more than 10 minutes of material. and God Okay. I, I'm more focused on my image than on my friends and fans. I That's not true. Uh, that's absolutely not true. I adore meeting any fans. Uh, anyone who's ever come to a live show knows that I try to spend time with everybody afterwards, shaking hands, hugs, pictures. Like, I fucking love you guys. So that actually hurts to hear. Um, it hurts to hear and i think he said something like i don't have 10 minutes of material which is so i will not be performing strange. at the ac shows just a quick quick bit of news uh? are you on your period bobby well you know me i'm more worried about my image than performing with my friends and fans so i am gonna focus on that i don't have more than 10 minutes of material that kind of hurts too he just said i don't have uh, more than 10 minutes of material like i just recorded an album in january it was 53 minutes long so i do have more than 10 minutes of material and in fact like bobby worked on my album uh with aaron so this doubly hurts like it's like i thought i don't know i i thought these guys were excited for me like the album did pretty well uh but i guess i i, I apparently only have 10 minutes of material God forbid I do anything called crowd work. So no, fans, I will Bobby, not just... be live streaming and my fans deserve to see an untainted product when they go to see me on tour. So that I will not be legit. there. How do I sound now, Bobby? Crystal clear. Okay. So do you you're have not... a list of your fans? <laughs> well, do you? The ones I you bought should. or the ones that I are legit? Both. 
I mean, you could just check my Twitter. The ones I bought. So Bobby thinks I have purchased fans, uh, which I don't like hearing that. It's not true. In fact, I make fun of people who buy fans. Uh, I was like literally one of like the big things I made fun of Chad Zumach for was because he bought a bunch of fans and anybody can see it. This is I. this is why I love Social Blade. This is a, a site I use all the time to see if people have purchased fans. Uh, I do not buy fans. Uh, and, and here's the proof. Like you can see steadily it, it when somebody buys fans, it's like you see a sharp jump of like 1000, 2000, not steadily a hundred a day over years. Um, and again, you can correlate when you get more followers, if a tweet is fire or something happens or there's drama, you can always link up. This might've been like a purge, like a Twitter purge or something when it goes down. But as you can see, like this is the followers and it, it's, it goes steadily up. This is steady. There's no crazy jumps or spikes. And if it suddenly went up very sharply, then that is something that if you see that you go, okay, this person buys followers, but I do not buy followers. All of my followers are real. So I don't appreciate uh, somebody going around saying that I buy followers, especially somebody I work with. It actually kind of hurts. It's pretty shitty. You know where they are. Or you um, could ask my business manager slash significant other. Wow, very specific. Ooh, Bobby. Um, so he's referring to my boyfriend, Frank, who I've been with for seven and a half years, who has uh, like been with me seven and a half years. So and it's like and I'm a comedian. And so to be with somebody that long, like you're going to work with someone closely. Uh, it's, it's just unfortunate uh, to just hear somebody like, take a jab at your fucking boyfriend well bobby if we can't live stream your material maybe we can we will shut it off for you and then when the other comics go on they'll be live streamed is that well, okay well what i would prefer is if you know me i'm more about fame than comedy so i would prefer if bobby thinks i'm more about fame than comedy again like what i'm not sure what this is based on i've never not done stand-up the whole uh guess 10 11 years that i've been doing comedy um I, i'm just not sure what to make of that if we just streamed every other facet of my life instead of the comedy part you know the part that i actually like focus on and try to hone in let's just focus on the non-comedy parts that's what everybody really wants to see i mean if you think that's what's best i'm not going to tell you how to run your career it just seems maybe you should as a comedian take into account what you're doing on stage a little more and try to focus on that. Are not well, comedy Steve, parts your tits? Here, here's what I feel like. I feel like you guys aren't saying is that I'm at the risk of not being the center of attention for this show. <sighs> so this this is so disappointing to hear. Like I I did not bring up not wanting to be live streamed to be the center of attention. Uh, ugh. I mean, I just it's it's disappointing to hear someone who's also a comedian. Hey talking shit but be like not understanding the very real reasons why someone wouldn't want to be live streamed again this is something anthony has talked about ken Brennan has talked about um there's like genuine concerns that not just me it's not just me being difficult being a problem like this is it's a concern that uh lots of people have and you know what maybe i don't know i guess i'll bring up a clip of of Anthony and Kevin talking about, cause I just wanted to be clear that like, this is not me trying to be a problem. I'm really like, <laughs> I even called in to be like, to Anthony show be like, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to take money out of anybody's pocket. Again, it's like not, um, uh, not something I'm doing to be a problem. And like, even on this episode, this is Anthony's episode from Thursday where he was first brought up as a concern. Um, they're both talking about why this is a concern. I'll talk about it. Like, I'm not going to sit yeah. and not voice it on the air. Because yeah. there's another controversy now that the Atlantic City show is uh, uh, Aaron selling virtual tickets. So you'll be able to watch it online. And Chrissy's like, what the fuck is this? We weren't told about this. Yeah, This isn't something that I would have agreed to. Yeah. It cheapens the whole thing. It fucking, it, it might, somebody might go to the show and then be like, hey, no, I'll just watch it at home. But then they can they can can't they record your act and then put Just it out not afterwards? Well, they know they, no, but I'm saying, but but people watching home can record it and then put it out on YouTube. Yeah, 
Yeah. You can't protect your yeah, material. Yeah, you can't protect your material, which is so, a big thing. So yeah. Chrissy Chrissy said, you know, I'm I'm not doing this. <laughs> so so you look at the fucking thing that says Chrissy Mayer's gonna be there. She's not. A unless, of course, because I said I'll have a talk with Aaron, uh, because I don't agree with this either. I don't think there should be some fucking online uh availability of a show we're doing live in Atlantic City. Jeez. So it's not, it's not, I'm not set me doing it to be the center of attention. Like, please don't think that I, I know that we are a group. I fucking love compound media. I feel like I do nothing but sing compound media's praises. I truly believe that like, these are my people. I really feel like compound media is like a family. I I've, tr I've tried to uplift everyone. I, you know, Bobby's about to make fun of the content house thing I did in a little bit. Like I invited Bobby to that, Aaron to that. I invited so many of the compound people to participate in, in the content house thing because I, I love these guys and I enjoy working with them. So it's very disappointing to hear somebody you work with talk, <laughs> like talk shit. And, uh, again, it's, I didn't do it to be a problem or make it about me. It's like, these are, very just real concerns that any comedian would have about their shit being um being live streamed so i'll pick it back up from where this was here so by doing this i can make sure i recapture the focus bobby i don't know that you ever were the center of attention if that was ever that is about that was point. ever on the, on board mm, I'm, I'm pretty sure pretty sure i was always the center of attention mm -hmm. at least in my world Oh, in your world. That oh, in makes Bobby's a, world. Yeah, of course. It makes a world of difference. <laughs> the most important guy there. But as far as like everything here, comedians of the compound, or you were you were part of the show. You're on it, but you're not the crux. You're saying that me doing this might like hurt somebody who actually brought me on board here and like made me a part of the company. Hurt? I I'm not sure what this means. Who would I be hurting by not doing the live stream again? I wasn't like take the whole show down. I was like, okay, I just won't participate. I expressed I expressed a concern. Um, other people, like Anthony, had the same concern. So again, this is not me trying to make it about me and like ruin everybody's good time and ruin everybody's like extra source of income. Uh, maybe no. not hurt them. No, I wouldn't think about be... that. I'm more worried about being the center of attention. A little disrespectful and kind of not nice to them. No, not if, at all. You know, they offered to bring you on these things, Bobby, everywhere. We Austin, Vegas, and AC a couple times. Like, okay. Uh, I mean, I haven't been to every single Comedians of the Compound show. Not every one of us is booked on every single show. It just would be impossible to have, like, what, the same nine or ten of us on every show. Plenty of shows I haven't been on. Um, in fact... I I booked a show in Dallas. Uh, I, it was me, Anthony, and Aaron, and uh, it was at Hyenas in Dallas. And then I also like brought those guys to the Blaze um, because that was something that I wanted to share with Compound Media. I wanted to get Anthony and Aaron, and I tried to get Gino on too, but he wasn't available the the last time I tried. Um, I want to, I want them to be like uplifted. I wanted to kind of like share the blaze sort of contacts with them and and the, basically share the wealth so it's not like i haven't contributed anything i'm not some sort of like i mean I, i'm not you know using anybody uh it hurts to hear this because i have certainly like contributed to uh i think the success we we all contribute to the success of the shows so this i don't know kind of hurts to hear you, you're there every time i don't know if you heard about. i stormed the capital i'm a big deal I, I don't know why he would bring that up. I uh, I don't know. Again, to me, this is like how many random trolls online are mentioning the whole storming the Capitol thing. I don't see how it's relevant to this. To me, it seems just like, I don't know. Again, kind of hurts to hear. A lot of people did that. Um, did you get in? No, no, no. God, no. Good. That's probably, you're better off. You're, uh, you're not on some FBI wanted list. <laughs> But hey, you know, we'll, we'll have, Bobby, I'd, I'd say we're just happy to have you there in whatever form that takes. Yes, what I'm we trying to make to sure is that you. once Aaron's gone, me and my people are in charge of running these going forward. You know, just my vision and making sure that's what happens. I'm just. OK, this is a big one for me that I have to address. Like there 
there has there have there has not been a single conversation uh, with me or at any with anyone at Compound or with Compound. I haven't talked to Anthony or anybody at Compound about the idea of of taking over the shows. That this is not something I've talked to anybody about. Um, fucking Aaron's not even gone yet, so I really hate that that's being put out there. That that is like a rumor or gossip that's being put out there. Um, that is not something that is true. In fact, I think like Anthony brought up on his show that he did want to continue the shows. It's not just, uh, you know, I, I'm i sure all of us were thinking like, hey, are these shows going to continue after Aaron leaves? Because Aaron does mostly plan most of the shows. And I've offered to help in the past. And um, but he seems, you know, he seemed to take care of everything. So, I mean, there's even a clip here that I can play that I'm I'm not the only one that's, you know, concerned about the shows continuing. Like, Gino wants the shows to continue. I think Kumia wants the shows to continue. That, that, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Because that's, you know, whatever. And then, you know, a few months later, it's the last comedians of the comment. And then Chrissy brought up a great point. We were texting each other, and she goes, are we even going to be able to use comedians of the compound or does he own it and he's going to sue us okay that last, last part is a joke like i never said like is he going to sue us i just was like can we tour under comedians of the compound like, i don't know, he is you know even the fact that they're saying it's the last one uh uh jameson tweeted out a video where he said this is the last and now i'm getting sad i'm like it feels yeah, like it feels it's like weird. the last hurrah i think he wants to just cleanse himself of this but Motherfucker, we're still here and we'll still do gigs. Jesus fucking Christ. He's like trying to blow up. It's like a kid kicking over the sandcastle before he leaves the beach. <laughs> Fuck. When I saw him, I'm like, well, you, you could still do. I don't know. It just seemed, it seemed, it seemed like, yeah, it just, it made me like a little sad. Was, yeah. And Don James said it was almost like a hostage situation where Don yeah, James is yeah. like, the last one we're ever doing. Is this what it, is this right, Aaron? What am I supposed to say? It's it like, was, no, it's Aww. I mean, like, so the point of me playing is I was like, I'm not the only like we all kind of want to keep doing shows. So it's not like I have talked to anybody about taking it over. Um, I think continuing the shows is something that everybody wants to do. So I just wanted to like make sure people know like i i don't have some scheme to keep everyone wants to keep doing the shows just i see an opportunity for power and i'm trying to seize it opportunity for power well, Bobby, i don't know uh, what that means uh, we, i can only wish you luck no you know, good I luck wish you a in slow, your death. game of thrones style uh acquisition red of wedding. Red wedding what, power which i'm going to put quotations around some power i don't, I don't know how powerful you will be thanks man I appreciate that because you know that's what's more important than being funny. Okay. Okay. I guess I'm not funny. I. It's, I mean, again, like <laughs> this is this hurts. I mean, like I thought we were cool, Bobby. Shit. Damn. <laughs> and I still like Bobby. It's just like I have to definitely refute the idea that I'm trying to take over the shows. I just like performing with everybody. Well, let's, let's it, get back to your poots. A lot of yeah, a lot of talking there about one thing that seemed like it was about something else. But I'd rather get back to about talking about my shit. So in the last video we played, you saw I'm just sitting there like, what the fuck? This uh, you hear water ha like doing something, but it's not spraying my ass. So with oh, maybe I'm projecting. Punch. My bad. With a dirty asshole, I now had to stand up and figure out. No, and now I'm doing plumbing. Why the fuck is my ass not getting sprayed? I'm moving. Okay, so I'm his poop. Um. I'll fast forward it because I feel like he just takes another jab a little bit further into the show. Yeah, if you if you jerk off and like just go to bed, when you wake up the next morning, you'll have to like break open a fucking seal <gasps> to pee. It's kind of it's like honestly the Capri Sun. Yeah, well, sure. No, you don't stick anything in there. <laughs> what no, if no, no, we no. live stream from inside the toilet and people could give donations based on Pavini Pizza's here? How much water they Yay! want? Yay! Oh, I can't. So he's like clearly taking a a jab at like the fact that I do YouTube and uh, there are super chats. And when we did the content house, like people could send in a super chat, like you guys know how YouTube works. But again, like I don't feel, feel like that's a negative. I mean, we're all allowed to do more than one thing, right? Like we can do stand up and YouTube and work at compound media and have a day job. 
I I don't know. Can't wait to make that into poop. God, their pizza is so good. We could call it crap tent house. Because it's like a bagging on the, the content house thing. Okay. Call it the crap tent house. Anyway, back to crap tent. I know why Bobby is upset. I know. Well, we all know what he's talking about. He's talking about he's, me. He's no, he wants to do another content house. Right. Oh, yeah. Mad you no comedy, though. To that. Let's just all do live show. I, I, I was invited to that. It's my brand. But you didn't go. No. No, I didn't. So, like, That's Steve, all- ignored, I invited Luby. I think I invited Steve. I definitely invited Bobby. Every, you, know, these, you guys were all invited to the content house. Like, please come. Like, I fucking love you guys. Be a part of other things I do. Uh, and he had to take that. It seems like just taking a jab that it was not comedy, that it was just uh, the live stream. But again, like, it's the house. It was us, like, hanging out. Like, you don't have to be on stage to on stage is not the only place you can be funny like we had a blast we had so much fun we were joking around the whole time i mean we did a 48 hour stream i didn't even think that was possible everyone there had a great time we went shooting we went uh roller skating there was a brewery trip um so i don't know and and these guys were invited and uh, i just don't understand uh making fun of it so i don't know it kind of hurts uh, let's see. Is there another point of note here? Probably. Is there a way to warm up the water? Yeah, and you got to connect it to the because there's options for that, and that's really so pleasant. The great, great. I think I would have to buy a different one than the one I have, which Are you sure is not on the docket. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't yeah. know. The one, the one I have connects directly into like your toilet line. I'm a big fan of bidets. They're the only way I can be satisfied now since my lover can't, of course. <laughs> I will not be at Comedians of the Compound due to the live streaming. That is a reminder for everybody. Again, All like, right, well, buddy. I don't understand. Well, we're, we're, we'll miss yeah. you. Anyway, let's uh, shift gears and go into the Steve. <laughs> let's please shift gears. Um, and then I think he brought it up one more time towards the end. I, I gotta tell him, like, I'm not gonna talk to you about gambling anymore <laughs> <laughs> because I don't want to enable this behavior. But anyway, speaking of enabling behavior, in hot water is up right now. Yep, just Bobby, remember, Luby, anything. Yep, fuck loyalty. Take your 15 minutes of fame. I'll be doing a simcast later, but I won't be at the comedians of the compound unless if Frank lets me. Alrighty, talk to you later. I don't understand why he brought up the simcast. It's another show that I do on YouTube. I don't see how it's related and I don't appreciate the comment. Like I can only do it if Frank lets me like, uh, I don't know. Again, like I like Bobby. I've always liked him. I've always been friendly to him. Um, but when someone who works at the network makes these kind of like accusations, especially like the buy- buying followers and the, I, I want to grab power and take over communities of the compound. Like those are things I have to address because it fucking sucks that, that someone who I I thought I was cool with and friends with and close to uh, puts that out there. It's pre- it's just like it's really disappointing. And um, I just don't understand why. Uh, I feel like I was pretty thorough. Okay, I'm gonna get to a couple of <laughs> uh, super chats. Oh my god, the dreaded super chats that are so controversial. Um, I feel like I addressed it. Sarah J stuff. And then this stuff, which is kind of disappointing. Scott Campbell, seriously, how lucky to catch you live. I'm curious to hear what could actually offend an adult film star, right? The N-word is only okay to say it if you're getting banged. K-Max, uh, Chrissy, um, was what bothered you most is Sarah J did a public virtue signal instead of a private message. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Because I had spoken to her publicist. I had apologized that she had a bad time. I tried to explain and give context to what was going on with some of the drama, with some of like the, you know, Gino and Kevin Brennan inside joke stuff. Um, There's just like a lot going on. And it's really unfortunate that she made it about her to virtue signal instead of like, oh, hey, let me try to get some context for, for why this happened. Again, not excusing it, not saying, uh, it, it's okay or that it's a good way to go, but just to, just to like let people understand and yeah, very virtue signally when it's like, I'm, I'm sure other shows she's doing people say the N word and I'm sure she's not going to walk out of that. 
Scott Campbell, CM, I'm 50 years old. Let me offer you some old person advice. When someone tells you how they feel about you, believe them, forgive them, and forget them. Any future interactions are just inviting abuse. Keep doing. Keep doing you, Roth. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for the super chat. Thank I love old people advice. You're not old, though, by the way. 50 is not old. So, okay. I don't know. Again, like, I love everybody at Compound Media. I, I was very upset to hear that. And it's like, because you expect, God, I mean, we have so many trolls. And, uh, which is all good. It's part of being a comedian, public figure, whatever. But um, I just, when someone who you work with is making accusations, like, you, you got to address that. So that's all I wanted to do here. Dan Halen, Sarah Jane looks like a trans Mickey Rourke. <laughs> Uh, good one okay Daniel when men are passive aggressive it says more about their state of mind than anything you did he obviously has his own issues to settle don't spend more than five minutes self analyzing oops I spent almost an hour <laughs> I talked about it way too long probably I probably did talk about it way too long but I just wanted you you guys to know like me not doing the live stream is, is, is not uh, like me trying to be a diva or something like that. I just, the longer I've been doing stand up, which has been like 10, 11 years at this point, like you do learn uh, that certain things do kind of like cheapen the live show experience. And I do have these headlining dates coming up with, and I just wanted, I want people to go to those. So, right. All right. I love it. I love all you guys. I love everybody. We're all going through it right now. Okay. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Guys, tune in tonight. Sorry if that was long-winded. I'm probably not going to edit that because I don't know how to edit. <laughs> but tune in tonight uh, at 6 o'clock. I'm going to be doing uh, a CMP with Legal Bites. We're going to be talking about the Johnny Depp case. So that's going to be interesting. And then at 8 o'clock, I will be... Is it 8 or 9? Okay, and then at eight o'clock, I'll be doing a CMP with Julia Song. Um, she's on OAN, OANN Network. Uh, so I hope to see you guys at those live streams, at those shows. Yeah, come in with your questions. Your bring your Johnny Depp questions yes. and concerns, and because that's it's it's an interesting trial, and I heard that it's going to go on for about six weeks. Woo, which is a doozy. Cam, what's up, Cam? Cam Harmon. Shout out, by the way, to Flagrant Triggers, my new t-shirt provider. You can get your Rootin' for Putin shirts there and your Bayer Bayer shirts there. Go to flagranttriggers.com. Uh, thank you for the super chat, Cam. You make lifelong fans at your live shows because that's where you connect with them and give your personal time. Seems like you know the difference between building a base and maximize profits. I mean, it's like, I understand both. Like, I, uh, I understand people need to make money at what they do. Um, thank you, Cam. Crash Mondo. Just some quick simp dollars. You rock. Thank you, Crash. I met Crash in person. We met at the Tampa show. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's, I have this brass. Come on. I am not, I am truly not trying to make it all about me. Like I, I very much try to be a team player. Uh, I feel like I've I've done a lot of promoting Compound on other platforms and getting Compound Media talent on other shows. Like I freaking just had Gino on my uh, live stream last night with Gary Sheffield Jr. We're talking about baseball. All right, and yeah, like Anthony's been on Friday Night Tights, so I uh, I don't know. It's a family. If I can love everybody, okay. I missed your Sarah J super chat, Scott. Oh, good lord. Oh, let's scroll up. I'm trying to wrap this up. I'm trying to land this plane. I'm trying to land this plane. Yeah, it's too bad about Sarah J. But uh, is this it? Merlin's ID. You have someone you love who helps you with your work. Um, burned. Oh, oh, yeah. Talking about my boyfriend. Yeah. It's it's hard to do what uh like what we do if you don't have support. Oh, Miles Swan, Bobby seems jealous. Hmm. I wonder. Like we all have our fucking moments. I just like I just can't imagine actively talking shit about somebody I work with. 
uh was it this one k max oh yeah yeah yeah. no i did address that one all right all right oh is it this one scott Sarah thought she would be the feature of the scene, not just a random participant of a gangbang. Now she knows how. Guy number three feels. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I hope I got it. I hope I got it. Scott Campbell. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Um. Oh, Eric K. Power hungry. Chrissy Mayer boobs taking over FNT for sure. Again, I people are like, do you know who that account is? I have no idea. I have no idea who Chrissy Mayer's boobs is. I kind of don't want to go. I, I kind of don't want to know. To me, it, that's like my tooth fairy. And I, I want to keep it a fantasy, I guess. Okay. Oh, one more. Thank you, Front Porch Conservative. Chrissy, I'm sorry you're dealing with this. It's one thing to get knifed by a stranger. Um, it is one thing. But when it's a friend, it burns and bleeds worse. Hold your head up high and stay strong. I know. I was very upset yesterday. Uh, I even tried calling Bobby. It was like, it was a little bit before his show. Um, I tried to explain like why I was upset and he made it pretty clear. He wasn't interested in talking to me for very long and he didn't try to like call me back today or text me or try to, you know, keep talking about it. And he's like, well, my opinion's not going to change. That's how I feel. Um, Trent Steele. I missed it all. No idea what's happening here. Support anyway. Thank you, Trent. Corn, Corin, Michael. I'm simping so hard right now. Loving you, Chrissy. Thank you, Corin. Guys, won't let me end. You won't let me end the show. Okay. I got a text here. Let's see. Is it relevant? Da, da, da. Okay. Okay, guys. I love you. This has gone on way too long. I meant this to be like a quick little video, but um, it's gone on. Anyway, love you guys. Thank you for the support. Come to Comedians of the Compound this weekend in Atlantic City. Get tickets at compoundcomedy.com. I will not be on the live stream, but that's okay. Everybody can do what they want. Um, thanks for the support. I will see you later tonight for the six o'clock and the eight o'clock again six o'clock with legal bites eight o'clock with julia song bring your johnny Je johnny depp questions for the six o'clock uh thank you guys talk to you soon